100 days of Minecraft Hardcore, but in pixel mode, with thousands of Pokemon across the globe. Am I able to survive 100 days in this world? We'll have to find out. Before we start, I wanted to talk to you guys about Pokeglobe. This is the Minecraft server I played on for 100 days, and that I'm still playing on. So if you'd like to join me, all you have to do is do the installation tutorial in the description and join the game. These come with different realms as well, including these features and so much more. So hop on. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the video. On day one, we had to start our Pokemon adventure, so you know, why don't I start with Charmander? Who doesn't start with Charmander? After choosing my Pokemon though, I decided to go look around the lobby, and not totally because I got lost or anything, I just kind of wanted to look around. But by day two, I had a better understanding of what I'm doing. I decided while I was down here to go get some materials. I might as well get some for now so I can build a house. I continued looking around and I found this really weird portal. I went to go and look, but I decided to go into it later. I have no idea what could be in there. But while I was looking around, I found a poignard and it was level 21. I knew I couldn't fight it with my Charmander, so I decided to try use some Ultra Balls so I could catch it. After using some of them, I was actually able to catch this. Finally, our second Pokemon. I went to the leveling tower because I wanted to see how good my Pokemon really was. And don't worry why I'm fighting level 4s, that's kind of not important. <laughs> anyway, after that we continued our journey. We found a timber on the way too, a level 17 one. And I thought, why don't we add our third Pokemon to the roster? Luckily, we didn't have to go through many Pokeballs. And now, we have three Pokemon. But I decided to continue exploring that day. And while I was looking around, I eventually found a village. And a pretty big one too. I thought let's go destroy this village. Also Santa was here for some reason, I'm not sure. There were also many trainers, so I couldn't resist fighting them. I decided to go take the first shot with my Ponyard. I ended up getting the Anorith low and I decided to go for the second one. The Anorith takes down Ponyard and Timber. Now I have no Pokemon and I have to retreat. Day 4 to 6, I knew I had to level up my Pokemon. I decided to go take them to the training tower. I knew this was going to take a while though, and I was doing really well. No, don't die, no! Yeah, you you didn't see anything. It was really hard to get Charmander to level up. I was fighting real strong Pokemon like Vigoroth and others, so I was losing quick. I need to find another way to level up Charmander. On day 7, I found a boss. It was a mega evolved mana trick. This was going to be bad, and someone stupid like me, I decided to fight this Pokemon. It was deadly, but I wanted to catch, and that did not go well at all. Ponyard died instantly, same as Timber, and obviously Charmander. At this point, my Pokemon were just getting harassed. I also went AFK and definitely didn't rage. <laughs> Day 8 to 10, I decided to finally settle and build a house. Anyway, let's roll the montage. This will look good for now. Day 11 to 15, I saw a gigantic Pokemon in the air, and it was level 14, so I had to go on and chase for it. I decided to go through by crossing the trees, but I eventually lost it, which was really sad. I was really hoping to catch it, but instead of not finding a level 40 Pokemon, let's get our Pokemon to level 40. We decided to go back to the leveling tower and try get some more levels. I even ended up beating the trainer that I originally fought, but after a while of fighting them, everything changed. Charmander evolved into a Charmeleon. This is going to be so good. I had to go test him out. Me and Charmeleon decided to do even more Pokemon battles and see how strong he was. And he was much stronger and was leveling up even quicker. Day 16 to 19, like me, I went exploring. And while I was exploring, I found a Bulbasaur. He wasn't a good level, but I still wanted to catch him. And after a while of throwing Pokeballs, we caught him. The fourth Pokemon onto our roster. Hopefully we can get him high leveled and ready to fight. We decided to continue our journey though, and we encountered a Persian, and it was level 36. I knew I had to get its health down so I could capture it. This was going to be hard with my Pokemon, but it's fine because I eventually threw another Pokeball, and I watched it and waited until I eventually caught Persian. This was the highest level Pokemon on our roster now, so this would be great. I also decided to go mining down and grab some Sapphire. But that's not the only thing I found down here. I also found a Lavatar. I knew if I caught this, I could make it into a powerful Pokemon. I, I killed the Lavatar. I accidentally killed the Lavatar. 
From day 20 to 28, I decided to go to the Leafling Tower. Since my Pokemon were much stronger, I decided to go do some fighting. I did lose some and I did win some, but it's eventually good because I was getting all my Pokemon higher levels. And while I'm fighting this Pokemon, make sure to leave a like and don't forget to subscribe because I'm trying to hit 100k this year. From day 29 to 34, with some of the ores I got from the cave, I decided to go smelt them. I decided also to add some chest and put all my loot in here. This meant I can go exploring without a full inventory. But I decided to go exploring again, and while I was exploring, I found an abandoned ruin. I had no clue what was inside of here, until I realized it's clustered with tons of ghost Pokemon. These Pokemon were much stronger than me too, but I eventually was able to kill them. I also realized they have a spawner, but I only realized I had a wooden pickaxe, so I couldn't do much about that. I decided to go up though, and see how deadly this place really was. And it was. I got attacked by a Haunter in a level 31 one. I was able to take it down though with Metal Claw, and I continued exploring. Since it's getting dark, I decided to go down though. This didn't seem good. At 35 to 36, I wanted to be resourceful, so I decided to go into a cave and mine some sapphire and some other ores as well. While I was getting out of the cave though, I realized one thing. There was a Machop in a level 28 one. I went and attacked the Machop with my Charmeleon and got it low. I decided to use an Ultra Ball though to be safe and awaited. But then, we eventually caught the Machop. This is one of my favorite Pokemon. But that's not the only surprising thing. Bulbasaur evolved into an Ivysaur. Now that we have a full strong roster, I'm not afraid of anything. Day 37 to 39, I decided to make an apricorn farm, as well as some other berries as well. I also ended up going to a village and realizing they had exclamation points above them. This must be missions. Anyway, I was a little busy, I'm not doing 250 Pokemon, but I did find something easy, finding these apricorns. But I gave him the apricorn and he didn't want it, so I ended up burying him. Yeah, no one's going to find you. Just say rip to Sky, guys. Like, I don't know what his name is, just say rip. Day 40, I didn't really do too much. I just wanted to make some small details to the house, like making the library. Day 41 to 43, I went to a village. And yes, I go to many villages. I ended up exploring the village. Otherwise than that, I didn't do too much besides fighting this kid and forgetting my controls. But then something different happened. I found a dr what is it? Anyway, this was a high level Pokemon. I threw a great ball at it and it instantly shattered. But then I threw another one at it, thinking it would work. Pretty stupid, right? Nope, it worked. I caught a level 55 dragon Pokemon. How? Before I went home though, from day 44 to 46, I went into a cave and got some iron. I went to go smelt it. I also found some brand new ores that I haven't seen, such like ruby and others. I also found this ore called bauxite, which I decided to go smelt, and it turned out to be aluminum. Did that furnace just look- it just turned its head and looked at me. Day 47, I went back home, and I tried to train up my Ivysaur. I tried to go catch this Poochiana, but it got in the way, so I ended up fighting it. I ended up using Sleep Powder as well to make it tired. Then, I decided to go finish the battle by using Razor Leaf and killing the female Poochiana. Wait, that sounded really aggressive. <laughs> I mean, I mean fainting it, I promise. I also ended up finding another one of those warps. I went and grabbed some blocks and built upwards so I could go get to it. But when I started building out to it, it vanished just like that. Maybe I can go find it another time. Day 48 to 51, I made some new tools and armor from some of the resources I grabbed. I also went back into caves just to grab a few more ores, but after that, I went and cooked all my apricorns. And if you're wondering why I need apricorns, it's to make pokeballs, and you'll see. You have to go smash them on the hammer to go make them, like this, and now you can go make an ultra ball. I don't know why I became a tutorial channel, but now I am. <laughs> Let me know if I should do tutorials. Day 52, you won't guess what I did. I went exploring, and I went on a hunt for a Mimikyu. I don't know if I'm saying these right, but hopefully. Anyway, it was getting dark, and I couldn't find one anywhere, so I decided to give up. Day 53 to 57, I decided to go fight more trainers, and there was some in the wild, so I went and encountered them. Funny enough, I did find that Pokemon from the hunt, which was like a corrupted Pikachu, but it's fine, because I killed it anyway. It was like the most boomer laugh I've ever done. Anyway, back to the point, I continued my journey and found a village. Yes, another village with more trainers to fight. I went and leveled up my Ivysaur and killed that pig. I mean, fainted, I promise. I also went to go and break this healing thing, but I only got one aluminum plate. But I could use that to my advantage. I went into a cave and went to go find more of them. I decided to go jump down into the water of the cave and started mining some of the ores on the side. I then smelted some of the ores and got some aluminum ingots. Once I had everything, I decided to leave the cave and went exploring for a little bit longer. But after that, I just ended up going home. 
I would need my anvil a lot for this, so I used my iron hammer and placed the aluminum ingots down. I ended up making a PC with all my materials I had, and now I can change my Pokemon from inside my house. I love how my house sucks, but then I have this PC. From day 58 to 69, nice. But I decided to go level up my Pokemon. I ended up using all this time and all this grinding to get them to the max levels they could. I knew I had to do this the most effective way possible. I'm honestly just like amazing. I can just go take all of these people down. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm deadly. I'm deadly. If you're wondering why I was finding low levels, I was using an XP share across all my Pokemon. But that doesn't matter because after a while, Ivysaur starts to evolve. But not only just that. Charmeleon evolves too, into a Charmander. Finally, both of them at the same time, in the same final battle. I also ended up changing some of their moves like Razor Leaf and Slash into Air Slash because this is going to help them. Now look how massive these Pokemon are. What is it? The samples Day 70, my house is still really boring, so why don't we change that? Here's montage building time. After building a lower level for the house, I thought why don't I make a bridge to make it easier to transport from A to B. But I know like the house looks bad right now, but shh, no, don't tell anyone. Anyway, after a little bit of building, I finally finished a bridge. Day 80, I really wanted to see more about this Pixelmon world, so I kept exploring. I also really wanted to find a shiny Pokemon, so after a while of looking, I did not find one. Yup. Who would have guessed? Yeah, I was getting sad. I thought I would never be able to find a shiny Pokemon, but that changed really quick. After I left that Hillian Center, I found a shiny Wingle in the air. I went for the chase. I had to get this Pokemon. I knew I couldn't give up on it, so I had to go up a mountain and everything. But sadly, after going up for this mountain for so long, I lost it. I had no air on it, and I couldn't do anything to find it. I was so annoyed. On the other hand though, this isn't close, but I did find this Meowth, which is a different version of it. Which was pretty cool, but it's still not as shiny. But I knew I had to catch this Pokemon. I've been trying to catch a Pokemon for so long, and this is the closest thing I'm getting to a shiny. Also, it took me this long to realize that I can fly my Charizard. Why did it take me this long to realize? <laughs> Day 86 to 95, I went to go find a legendary Pokemon. Not a shiny one, not a boss, a legendary. So I spent days and days trying to find one and i did find a legendary boss but i needed something to summon it and i had to kill three other bosses to do that so i had to leave and if you're wondering why it was frozen that's just because my recording crashed for most of the time but i mean it's fine right <laughs> i also found a lavata though which seemed pretty good but i ended up giving up on it i was honestly just so sad i was getting so angry i couldn't catch it after attempting to catch that lavata i continued my journey going across the ocean and everything I had no luck. I also ended up finding like this icy healing center, but it's still useless to me, I guess. So while I was flying home though, I ended up finding a warp portal and I knew this was my chance to go into it. I knew if I couldn't find a legendary Pokemon, I could at least do this. I built up as fast as I can and then it wouldn't even let me place my blocks. This was getting really bad, but I decided to go grab my Charizard and jump straight into it. Welcome to Ultra Space, a new Pixelmon Dimension. I ended up looking around and admiring these Pokemon I've never seen before. I didn't end up catching any of them, I just continued flying around. I ended up fighting some of these Pokemon, I wanted to see if they were strong, and to the one I fought, it was not strong at all. Like, really not strong at all. But I continued my journey in Ultra Space, and I ended up finding something I would never expect. An end city. You know what I was doing next. I'm going to conquer and get to the top of this end city no matter what I do. I thought it was a smart idea just to fly straight into it with my Charizard, but it did give me up a few levels. I realized though that there wasn't any loot until I went to the pirate ship. I knew I had to get over there for the elytra, but then my game crashed. Yup, my game crashed. I thought I just got kicked out of this dimension and I was worried, but I locked back in and continued bridging over to the ship. I didn't really need an Elytra, but it'd still be really cool to get in Pixelmon. Once I go down, I realize the Elytra actually is there, as well as a diamond pickaxe with unbreaking 
and precious loot such as six diamonds and two emeralds. This was so worth getting to the top as well as I got the elytra. This ultra space dimension is really weird and I'm actually really happy I could go here instead of finding a legendary Pokemon. They also even had never, a never fortress here. I ended up falling off this never fortress like the clumsy person I am and ended up falling all the way down back to the overworld. Ultra space was great, but I think it's time to go home. Day 99, I realized there wasn't that much time left, and I spent anyway trying to find a boss or at least a legendary. Even if I don't find one, it's fine. After a while, I gave up, but that's perfectly fine, because I decided to go fight Pixelmon. Why don't we spend our last days with our roster that we've trained for 100 days? Although our Pokemon weren't as high level as I expected them to be, I was really happy with the progress I made for my first time playing Pixelmon. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm happy as long as I win my last battle in Pixelmon. On day 100, I just kinda appreciated the 100 day progress we made. I'm Dezesco, and this was 100 days in Pixelmon. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed the video.